Well hello there and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be cooking up two delicious chicken recipes. I'm using some of that clearance chicken that I picked up in my last grocery haul. It's already marinated and it was short dated so uh, rather than chucking it in the freezer I ended up cooking it that same day. So just double checking as well the instructions. Now I'm using a turbo oven also known as a convection oven. I picked this up second hand on Facebook marketplace or something for about $20 but you can obviously use a normal oven as well. I just really like this one especially for like chicken. You can do veggies, you can do fish, anything you like. But basically I've just stacked up here the sort of two layers. Now to get both layers equally crispy I do recommend that you kind of swap swap them around about halfway through which I didn't do this time but it still turned out fine so just plugging this in now and getting this going before I'm going to cook up my um, starchy sort of potato side dish for this so I started it out on 200 degrees for uh, Celsius for about 30 minutes but I actually needed another 5 to 10 minutes on it but obviously just check your internal temperature on the chicken to make sure that it's done. And as a side today we're doing a very common Swedish dish called potatisgratäng which I think is known as potato au gratin in French slash English. Um, it's kind of like scalloped potatoes. Um, which you may or may not have had. So got a couple of things there, got some cream left, I've got a block of cheese, just normal tasty cheese. You could do mozzarella, whatever you like. And I've got some different seasonings here as well. So we're gonna do garlic powder, salt, pepper, and dill. If you are not used to cooking with dill seasoning, it is amazing for potatoes, but maybe it's also a byproduct of how I grew up. Anywho, we're getting the potatoes ready here. I had half a sweet potato that was hanging out in my fridge that needed to be used up. So I'm just cutting that up. Now I pre-boil my potatoes. Um, the regular potatoes I don't actually even peel. You can just see me sort of cutting them up here. But I pre-boil them so they're about 80% done. It just makes this dish really, really creamy because there's nothing worse than the potatoes not being quite um, ready when the dish is done. So that's boiling away and we're gonna just cut up this leek. You can use brown onion. I don't have a specific recipe. I can link um, a kind of indicative recipe below if you like, but I've made this dish for a really long time and I just kind of improvise depending what I have in the fridge. Um, the base is some kind of cream or milk um, and some kind of onion. But you can throw in some broccoli, you could throw in anything you have in your fridge you need to use up. So today I'm using leek, um, sweet potato and potato as my base. But it works great with brown onion, red onion, spring onion, whatever you want. So we're just putting that in the um, oven safe dish and my potatoes are done here in the background. So I'm just, like I said, they're about 80% done. So I'm just cutting them up. Um, they're quite hot at this point, but I'm cutting them up into sort of slices here and just putting them into the dish. If you wanted to, you could get super fancy and layer it, you know, beautifully. But we were pretty hungry. So I just got this done and put it in this dish. Now, obviously we're gonna need some kind of sauce as well. So I had about half a container of this thickened cream and I forgot to show you before, but I like using whole grain mustard. It's um, a really nice sort of seasoning with this. And then I'm obviously needing a little bit more liquid. So I'm gonna to top it up with milk. Full cream milk is uh, ideally better. If you are dairy free, I've actually never tried this dish with um, a non-dairy milk, but let me know if you have and um, how that's turned out. Um, I'd love to try that actually, because I, I do a fair bit of, um, of almond milk normally. And then we're just gonna pour this over. And now it doesn't need to cover the potatoes or anything. What you're looking for is about a third to half of your dish depth covered in some form of liquid. Now there was a little bit more uh, mustard and good stuff in that bottle. So I poured a little bit more milk in to just shake it out and get all those beautiful flavors. And getting some salt onto that, um, using my um, cooking salt there and my other seasonings. Now you can use whatever you want um, for this. I normally keep it pretty simple. And um, I mean garlic, how can you go wrong with garlic? Oh, and dill, obviously. I've already sung the praises of dill here. But um, yeah, so this 
just turned out really really well and then the last thing that we're going to add which is optional is your cheese so I'm just um, sort of flattening out my potatoes a little bit um, and then you are going to be baking this because the potatoes are very close to done it's kind of like any sort of oven bake so I think I baked this for about 25 minutes keep an eye on it I think I had my oven on a between 180 to 200 uh, degrees Celsius um, and when it starts kind of looking like this I normally turn on the fan grill just to get that bubbly beautiful cheese to crispen up a little bit so my chicken at this point was done my um, husband was very hungry so he was starting to get it all ready and I just cooked up some green beans to go on the side and I'm telling you this is such a beautiful comfort food dish it's so inexpensive and we love it Next up, I'm trying a new Parmesan chicken recipe and I'm making some baked potatoes to go with it. I had some potatoes hanging out in my pantry that needed to be used up. So, and you will see that there are different kinds of potato here. I don't discriminate. I will use whatever I have on hand that needs using up. But I'm really excited to try this Parmesan chicken recipe. I will link it below. I found it on YouTube on Julia's channel. I love her recipes and inspiration. So highly recommend you check her out. Uh, but yeah, I will link the recipe for the chicken below. So all I'm doing is um, stabbing my potatoes with a fork just to make sure that they cook properly. And then I'm rubbing them in a little bit of plain old salt and olive oil. And I've got my oven on here in the background. Um, we're gonna be cooking the chicken in the same oven. So I try to be efficient when I plan recipes so that I can use um, the same, um, you know, not heat up the oven just to cook the one thing, but to actually cook both of them. So we're gonna pop the potatoes in here. Very hard to do this one-handed, by the way, when you're holding the camera. But we're gonna pop the um, potatoes in and they're gonna need sort of 45 to 50 minutes probably on about 200 degrees. And here we've got my chicken. I've got chicken tenderloins I picked up in my clearance grocery haul and some seasoning. I also tried something new. This is olive oil and fresh oregano from my garden that I've frozen in an ice cube tray and then transferred to a bag. So I'm gonna try using that because the recipe called for um, dried oregano. So I thought, why not? Let's try that. So that's all we're gonna need for this recipe. And now I've got my oven tray. I've lined it with um, baking paper. And I'm just gonna lay the chicken out on this um, sheet pan. Now, the recipe actually called for chicken breast, but kind of cutting it in half so it was thinner. So I figured these chicken tenderloins would actually work quite well. Normally I wouldn't buy tenderloins, but um, they were quite cheap. So that's why I got them for this recipe. And um, so there we go, there is my chicken. And now we are gonna start by seasoning them with the recommended um, bits so <laughs> my garlic powder was not cooperating on this particular day so um, anyway we work with what we have so I've got my onion powder my garlic powder paprika you can use uh, the smoky kind which is what I had on hand or whatever else you've got and um, some salt and some pepper and um, then you're basically just gonna repeat this on the other side it is really important, I find, especially with budget type recipes, to make sure that you have a well-stocked seasoning cabinet. Seasoning is a very inexpensive way to just really enhance a lot of dishes. And I am by no means a gourmet chef, but I like experimenting with different things to just see um, how they turn out. So now we're gonna get started on the, um, well, first we're gonna start by uh, squeezing a lemon. Uh, I actually ended up using the whole lemon uh, because I did have a fair bit of chicken. You could probably also use, um, if you've got like lemon juice in a bottle in your fridge, that would probably be fine as well. But I poured this over the chicken only to realize that, yeah, we're going to need a little bit more. So, um, and I hadn't didn't have anything else necessarily that I needed that second half of the lemon for. So we're just going to pour that gently over and not wash off the beautiful seasoning that we did. And then we're gonna get started on the Parmesan mixture itself. So I've got some melted butter along with, I think it was two cubes of that olive oil oregano mixture I showed you before. 
And then we're going to grate up some Parmesan cheese. You can use um, any kind of Parmesan, Parmigiana uh, that you like. I just used uh, the plain old brand that I could get um, in my previous grocery haul. But just grating um, a fair bit of that up, I can't remember exactly, I think it was about a cup or almost a cup perhaps. I don't use exact measurements, but I often do try to follow the recipe when I'm making something I haven't made before. So I'm just referencing the um, recipe there off screen and then we're going to pour in that little mixture with the beautiful um, oregano and butter etc. And then we're going to use some garlic as well. Like you can use obviously fresh garlic. I often just have this type of garlic on hand. It's easy in, to have, um, have in the fridge for when you need it. A little bit of red pepper flakes, a little bit of mixed um, Italian herbs. Um, you could probably just, you know, make up your own mixture as well if you wanted to. And a little bit of salt uh, as well. Obviously, I already have a lot of seasoning on the chicken itself. So I didn't go too hardcore um, on this mixture because this is obviously what's going to be sitting on top of each little bit of chicken. By the way, this smelled amazing at this point. I've got my baked potato cooking, so it's all starting to come together and obviously the cook time on this chicken is a lot shorter simply because these pieces are smaller so I did want my potato to kind of get a good head start um, and yeah this was actually surprisingly easy to work with I ended up just using like a spoon you could probably use a little spatula of some kind if you've got one um, I don't think that kind of an oiled brush it's a little bit too chunky in texture um, but it smelled so amazing and I think I'm actually going to make more of those um, sort of cubey things I showed you with the oregano. I think I'm going to do them but with kind of mixed herbs as well because I do have a lot of fresh herbs in my garden at the moment and we're going into winter so I do want to salvage as much of that as I can. I've got thyme and basil and all sorts of good things out of my garden. So there we go, the chicken is covered and ready. So I just ended up following the cooking time in the recipe. Again, it is linked below and it smelled so beautiful. We were starving at this point, but the kitchen smelled so beautiful. And that buttery, lemony juice on the bottom underneath the chicken, we actually scooped that up and served it in our baked potatoes. I did try to check the internal temperature of the chicken to make sure it was done. But because the pieces were not very thick, the easiest way really to check is by cutting one up and making sure that it is cooked all the way through, which these guys were. So this was just absolutely beautiful. I can highly recommend this recipe. And uh, we just served ours with some steamed um, broccoli that I just did in the microwave and um, our baked potato. Now this made plenty of food. So we had two very generous serves uh, each for dinner so this was dinner for two nights I can highly recommend trying it such a simple meal uh, not a lot of processed food on these plates and highly recommend it let me know in the comments below if you end up making either of these recipes that I showed you and I look forward to see you in the next video